So it's streaming and recording. All right. And if anyone is wondering for the video, we go with 7:30. The is called. Detective Fan will not be on video. He requested not to be. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, again, my, uh, my name is uh, Detective Fan with the Goldport Police Department, of course. Um, well, I, I've been with uh, Goldport for 15 years. I spent um, six and a half years in patrol, about eight eight and a half years in, uh, as a detective. Um, since we are a small department, so I, I'm not really specialized in anything, so we do, we pretty much investigate everything from petty theft to homicide, robbery, sexual battery, and so on and so forth, things like that. So, um, let me see, um, I guess, Today we're going to be discussing about, I, I guess, sexual, registered sexual offenders or predators, and um, I guess the biggest question that everybody's going to ask is, what is the difference between a registered sexual offender and a predator? Uh, let me look my little notes here. <laughs> it's technology. Well, according to Florida law, um, a sexual offender is someone convicted of, a, convicted of a sex crime involving a minor and has been released from jail after October 1997. The crimes include child pornography, sexual performance, and child prostitution. A um, sexual predator is someone convicted of, convicted of a first degree felony, felony for sex crime or two second degree felony sex crimes occurring within 10 years after October 1993. And it's actually up to the judge to determine the label of the person. Um, so if, a, if a, like for instance, if a judge thinks this person is, should be labeled as a sexual predator, then he has the power to do so. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Gulfport. How many, uh, how many sexual predator, predators do we have? Well, currently we have about six um, sexual predators. And we have about 15 sexual offenders. Um, that is, to me, that's kind of a lot for a small oh, town, yeah. you know. And I believe at this point, I believe Goldport Police Department is the only city in the Pinellas County that do a monthly check on these sexual offenders. Which means we go out to their house, it's pretty much an unannounced visit to their, to their residence, and we knock on the door to make sure they still live in where they're supposed to be at. <clears throat> because sometimes they will list out an address as the home address, but they don't necessarily stay there. They stay somewhere, somewhere else. So in Goldport, we do a monthly check on them. The um, sexual offenders, um, usually they are only re required to check in with the sheriff's office twice a year. The sexual predators, they are required to check in with the sheriff's office four times a year. Um, but they are not required to check in with us, with the city of Goldport. So we do it as pretty much as a, an extra precaution, pretty much. Um, what happened if they in violation? Uh, they get arrested. You know, it is a second degree felony if they fail to update their address, fail to register, 
even if they have a car, if, if they say, for instance, they bought a, a brand new car or a used car, they are required to register that vehicle with the sheriff's office. And they also they are also required to register any vehicle on their property to the sheriff's office. It doesn't matter if it's theirs or not. As long as on their property, living with them, they, they, they are required to register um, those vehicles. Um, another thing about this, um, this sexual, these sexual offenders and, and predators. Um, some, some of these registered sexual offenders, they, not all of them committed, um, I want to point say, well, not all of them, not all of them are child molesters, okay? Um, I have a, 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 a guy who is, um, he's a um, registered sexual offender, but he didn't molest any kid. What happened was he, um, one day he, he went out and bought some drugs and he bought it from this guy who sold him bad drugs. So he got mad. He grabbed an object and battered the person with, with the object. You know, he pretty much raped the person with the object. Because I was angry because the guy sold him bad drugs. So in that case, he is not really a child molester. He just happens he did a he committed a sexual battery on a person who is an who is an adult. But because in the state of Florida, if you committed any sex crimes, pretty much you're gonna be considered as a you have you, you will, will be labeled as a registered registered sexual offender. Um, recently um, they came out with this law called the Romeo and Juliet Juliet Law, which pretty much um, prevented teenagers to become a, a registered sexual offender, or so labeled as a registered registered sexual offender. Um, for instance, if a um, 14-year-old female had consensual sex with an 18-year-old male. <coughs> um, the 18-year-old person who still he's going to get arrested, but he would not be labeled as a registered sexual offender due, due to the Romeo and Juliet. Now, only if she's consensual. Now, if, he, if it's a rape, then that's a totally different story than he's, you know, it's not, it's not a, it doesn't meet the criteria. Um, and, and that's the reason why they, why they do that, because you, you do it. just think about it. Well, All the kids cool. in high school, most seniors are 18 and 19, and some of the freshmen and sophomores are only about 15 and 14. So, you do that to protect the kids, which is, you know, in a way, it's the right thing to do. Um, other than that, do you guys have any questions regarding to the uh, sexual offenders? Yeah, um, a few years ago, we had a lot of prominent young men here that had that situation. Are they going back and releasing him as a registered sex offender now, or? since they've made this new law, what happens to those kids that were now carrying that? Yes, I, I believe they can still apply for it. Even if they say you committed a crime that happened um, 10 years ago, Ten years ago, mm -hmm. I believe you can still get their record changed. Yeah, apply for it. You, they have to apply for it though. Okay. You know, and then the, the judge would make, 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 make a make determination, a decision on it, yes. Okay. Um, that's good. At least they can consider it. All right. So, um, as you can see on this map, um, the blue stars where you know you see the um, 
the registered sexual offenders or predators. And um, some of you might live next to one of them. And I hope, I hope in this room we don't have anyone who is a registered, registered sexual offender. It's going to be very uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, no, none of us are blue stars, huh? Okay. Blue red stars. The red stars are the predators. Um, as you can see, they um, for some reason over just north of Tangerine and west of 49th Street. There seems to be a little bit more it is more concentrated in that in that area than yep. the rest. I, I have no idea why is that, but yeah, just cheaper housing maybe. Could be. Maybe because there's a lot of blue stars south of Twenty Second. Yeah. Yeah, and I just noticed um, just east of um, Forty Ninth Street and south of Twenty Second Avenue South is we don't have any. Well, that's not us. That's one. not going for it. Fifteenth Avenue and Sixteenth Avenue's got its fair share too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So now, of course, you know, when it comes to just, you know, if you happen to see, you know, one of them, one of these um, registered sexual offenders, um, just don't be mean to them. I mean, just, you know, because, you know, they, they still a human being, so just be nice and be a not nice you said, just don't say it, you know. Um, for the most part, correct me if I'm wrong, but most of the people on the list aren't really, um, at least visibly, are ones who cause a lot of problems with the police department. They kind of stay to themselves, is that correct? Yes, they they don't really cause, not yet, I mean, in your 15 years, they don't, they don't really cause any problems to the police or to the neighbors. They're very quiet. It likes to be uh, left alone, pretty much, because they're kind of embarrassed already um, that the police check on them every month, that we check on them every month. You know, and they, most of most the one that they wish to know that they are a registered sexual offender. I mean, you know, they, so they try to stay in a low profile, you know. Um, so, I don't, I mean, they don't appear to be a threat, you know, so, but if you do have children, the little kids, you, you know, you still, you gotta be, you know, just be careful. Um, you can, if you go to the website, I think it's go for a website, um, we have, you know, the, the, the um, information on these, on these um, sexual offenders should be on there. And there should be a link that you can link to the uh, FDLE to find out who, you know, if you have any registered sexual offenders living next to your house or not. You can check that out. Is it on our police website or the city website? The police website. Okay. There should be a link to um, FDLE. Yeah, the FDLE. Yeah, so. FDLE website, offender.fdle.ca. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so true. write to FDLE and then click on the uh, sexual offender and it'll give you this copy of this. Right here. Yeah. 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 Yes. Um, we had an issue I got a couple of years ago and I'm sorry, you may have done this with the relay. But what about transient sexual offenders? There was a gentleman that did not live in the confines of Gulfport. But he was always at his fence near the school. And Ernie and I, we were really concerned about that. And we spoke to Chief and other officers about that. Can you tell us something about transient sexual offenders or um, that have no address, sir? Yeah, just like, you mean like a homeless Correct. Um, offender. Well, they are only required to check in with the sheriff's office twice a year or four times a year so it depends on their status. And they pretty much give the sexual, uh, the, I'm sorry, the um, sheriff's office a certain location where, where they will be at. 
coincident, and they said, well, I'm sleeping at 5th Avenue South and 34th Street. That is what I will be at. There's no law saying that they are required to have an address. They just need to check in with the sheriff's office. Um, like I said, if they are a sexual offender, they probably do twice a year. If it's a predator, it's four times a year. And yeah, so if they, if they say that an offender who, who's sleeping in Goldport a lot, more than just one night, so say weekly, or daily, then he needs to tell the sheriff's office that, hey, that's where I'm sleeping at. I'm going to go for it. So we have an idea where he's at. But Does the sheriff's office notify you then? Yes, we work with the sheriff's office, and they usually tell us, you know, who's near, who's coming into town, who's staying, who's moving. Um, and like, like I said, we have one, if we have a homeless guy, and if he checks in with the sheriff's office, I mean, it's hard for us to track him because he's homeless. So he could be anywhere. I mean, he could tell the sheriff's office, well, I'm staying with this area over 5th and 34th Street. And the next month he moves somewhere else. He can still do that because he's homeless. So it, it's, you know, there's no law to govern that. It's hard. Yeah. Thank you. You can come on that as well. I'm sorry. If I can comment on that as well. You can come on. If I can comment on that as well. Should you um, There's, I think I know who you're referring to. It's the um, only black gentleman. No, sir. Okay, different person. Yes, sir. Okay. It was a gentleman that about a year and a half ago was across the street, directly across the street from the elementary school. Um, if he can help me. Lopez. Right. I think that's his name, Lopez. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. And we complained because, you know, it was scary. He's safely hanging over the fence when the kids were let out of school. And we do a lot of shopping in that area. It's just that, and it was, but the golf pro police did check on him often. I yeah, I remember Chief Vincent asked me to, to look at to, to him a Lopez. I remember because he was there right across from school. Yes, sir. Yes, and um, he was just, yeah, transient. I haven't seen him in, in, in a couple of years now since then, so. Um, well, in regards to the one recently, it was uh, clarified that because the offender or the person who was um, the victim was 18 or older, that they enacted all the same rules as other predators. And that was the one that was supposed to run the crime change. Correct. <clears throat> and, oh, yes, yes, sir. And that, uh, the fact that you are a registered sexual offender and you go to try to rent an apartment, and they, they turn you down because of that, and that's all legal? Yes. An apartment complex can turn you down. They can. I mean, it's their property. It's if they don't want you in, they just say, hey, we don't want you. They can, they can find any reason to. They don't, they don't have apartment complex. They, they don't have to accept your application as a tenant. It's even the water and stuff that they cannot not take you for. You know, they can you're, 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 you're right, right, you're, a lot of grounds. Yeah, you're, 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 you're uh, at the city. Anything. They can uh, say your credit is not good. They can say that. Yeah, well, yeah, but that's, that's, that's different. I mean, as far as, you know, you, uh, I don't rent to you because you're white. I don't rent to you because you're black. I rent to you because uh, well, they don't say you have a dog, you know, or something like that. Exactly. And, you know, there's all kinds of different reasons they cannot accept you. Uh, and all kinds of different reasons why well, you can't do that. You can't use that as an excuse for not renting to the guy. You know, you, you know, you can't do that. So is being a registered sex offender, where does that fall into? Is that a protected, for the landlord, that's a protected thing that they, they don't have to worry about that, you know, because by law they don't have to. Are, there, are they required to disclose that as a, as a registered sex offender? If he applies for a rent, is he required to disclose that he's a registered sex offender to the tenant or to the uh, landlord, I'd say? They don't have to. I don't believe so unless you run on the application. When you apply, we put an application and ask you. Yeah. Uh, usually, I think some application will ask if you ever have a convicted felon or right. been arrested or whatever. Yeah, 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 you put it down. Yeah. You know, and if, 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 the, if they find out you lied or if they find out you are a registered sexual offender. Now, the apartment complex, I mean, do they have 
the right to you to turn you away? I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe not. You know, I just question. Cool. There are some legal things that they can't, they can't turn you away because of this or because of that. And I just wonder where sexual offender falls into that niche. Right, right. Stanley, it would be a protection for the residents as well as for the sex offender because some people just don't want them around them and get a little bit volatile if they do it in the medallion's house. I mean, I was thinking to say, if you own a home and you want to rent, rent, it, rent it out to people, then just say you have a, possible, a potential tenant who wants to rent out your, your home, but then you find out that he is, he is a registered sexual offender, then you decide not to accept him, I guess that is your right. You can deny him, right? Well, if nothing else, it would protect your neighbors. Because with the neighbor on the one side, you might have eight kids. Mm -hmm. You know, and they find out that you've been an essential event, your day is mud, but you might as well just back to back and do the best they can. And then ain't going to work anymore. Yeah. Yeah, so. mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Another thing about these um, sexual offenders, um, especially around, let's say, once a year, we have what, Halloween. Um, just keep in mind, they are sexual offenders, but they, if they are, don't have any kind of stipulation or if they're not under supervision, they still allowed to celebrate Halloween. You can't, there's nothing you can do about it. They, they can be around kids and everything too. They will give out candies. But if they're under supervision and they have some kind of stipulation to their um, probation status, then you cannot. So it all depends. So if you if that time comes and you you know have a question about it, just give us a call and we, we look into it. Uh, but usually every Halloween we go out to do some usually the sexual predators have our homes and tell them, hey, don't be, you know, celebrating Halloween because you know you they, they could be in violation. So we do give them a little warnings and stuff like that. Because I know um, for years ago I have people, you know, citizen call me was concerned about um, sexual offenders who are celebrating Halloween. And I told them, yeah, they can. I mean, there's, not, there's no law against that. Well, not all sexual offenders attack children, either. That is true. Not all of them attack children. Though. Some of them get, I had a guy who, um, he was, he wasn't here. He was, he was in another state. He, um, I guess back then he um, he slept with his now his wife. But then back then he slept with his wife. She was seven. She was like sixteen or seventeen, and he was eighteen. I forgot what state he was in. But anyways, he got arrested for you know sleeping with a minor. And then later on, she turns eighteen. They got married. They got three kids together, <laughs> and he's labeled as a sexual offender. Is this the family that lives in Zone 1, or North of Zone 1? Yeah. I know you're talking about it. So, I, I mean, For the you rest know, of his life. Right. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's not fair to, to that person, you know, but, but that's how the law is. But that, that was in another state. Now, of course, that was before the Romeo and Juliet law came out. So now that it came out, could he try to apply for it? Yes. And get it removed? Because, but a little like what you were saying, not all of them attacks children. Um, yeah, he's, he got three kids with her. They've been, they've been, they've been married for like <laughs> 10 or 12 years. So. Here's another neat thing on the website that if you see a car driver in your neighborhood and it looks suspicious, you can always look up the tag number to see if it belongs to a sexual offender or predator. So. Yeah, like I said, they, they, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. I'm at the LA's website. Remember, they are required. Mm, that's great. Remember, they are required to register register their vehicle with the sheriff's office. Remember can that? you look up anyone's registration? Only the ones that are offenders. No, only offenders. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, they. They have to register with the sheriff's office, and right. then all those information gets sent to the um, FDOA, and they, they update to their website and so on and so forth. And so. Okay. Huh. Those are all the vehicles that he's got. Yeah, vehicles and vessels. He can look at boats too. 
but he doesn't have any votes. Um, and those are enough. not necessarily registered to him, but they are at his home. No, they're registered to him. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, no vessels on the bottom. Uh -huh. this, this gentleman's a sexual predator. That's why I pulled him up. Um, well, yeah, and, and apparently he has income. Yeah, there's more. Like, you go down here and click view vehicle and vessel information. Now, can you check and make sure he's got insurance on those vehicles? Uh, well, uh, or would you? I, if I did that just for the heck of it, I would get in trouble for misuse of it. Okay. Yeah, we, we, we don't. But if you stop him for something. Oh, yeah, if we stop him, we have a reason to stop him. Yeah, if we have a reason to stop him, then we do all that. We check all that, yeah. Now, as I was saying, now, I don't know much, I don't know about the uh, DOE website, but the, uh, the sheriff's office. Now, they still have to register vehicles that, that don't. That, that don't belong to them. Right. As long as, as long as long their property living with them, they have to, they are required to register register those vehicles. It really doesn't matter. It could be their, their roommate. That's, it could be that's their what roommate. I was looking at. Yeah. It's one person and he's got three cars. Nagy, Nagy, he has about two. I don't know. Maybe the other one is something else. There's a guy who lives in St. Peter with Nagy. So we have the information on Golf Corp. If you go to FDLE, this this gentleman is. 0.7 uh, square miles from the police department. That's his address there. He's, he lives close by in St. Petersburg. Uh, I think he's in St. Pete, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, anything else about the sexual offenders? And he's a repeat, too. They what? He's a repeat offender? Uh, twice. Um, Adjudicated twice. That's why he. Oh, failed to register on one. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I showed you at the bottom as well the uh, victim information, whether or not they were minor. Yeah, those. Yeah. They were not minors on this case. Yeah, so pretty much if you have a neighbor, you, you have to know his first name and last name, and you want to find out if he is a registered sexual offender or not. This guy. Just go up to the website and punch in his name, it'll pass up. And if he didn't register, where he's supposed to be at, notify us, and we will take some, some kind of action. But some, sometimes we have people who's been here for two years and didn't register and was under the radar, we didn't know nothing about it until later on. When they come in contact with, with police, and that's when we find out, oh, you know, they just moved from another state, they came in and they just didn't register. So we pretty much they, they pretty good, they, they body their, their, their status. And they can be get, they can be arrested for that. Um, thanks, Detective Fan. Appreciate yeah. your question. Well, thanks, sir. Thanks for your Thank time. You. Oh, you're welcome. All, All right. right. Take care, Drive. Right. Safe. All right. Hey, Stars. Good job, on. <laughs> you should be here doing that. Oh, he'll be here one night. Don't worry. All right. Uh, he's been here. Only if it floods. Yeah, if it floods. We'll need him for Marine now. What, uh, what, what kind of guest speaker would you like next month, everyone? What topic? March and Act, Baker what, Act, domestic violence? What's our problems? Other than uh, harm for the Yeah. 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 I was looking at that. Yeah, we need another detective for the burglaries and the thefts. In fact, uh, how about we do the number one crime? And the uh, police reports it. The it, crime staff. It's theft. 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 But it's vehicle theft, isn't it? Not theft. It's vehicle burglaries. Right. Unlocked vehicles. And bicycle thefts. Yeah. Hey, okay, you'll try the door. Yeah. 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 Ninety percent every every month since we've been doing this, I did that little tiny Excel spreadsheet. Ninety percent are unlocked. Yeah. That's or Yes, ma'am. Was there a word, I heard this way back in our crime watch days, curvilege, could someone, is, I thought I heard that in terms of unlocked vehicles or something, it really wasn't a robbery. Curvilege is more of like a structure or a building, am I okay. correct, Sergeant? Yeah, the curvilege would be anything deemed, I believe, on, on or near the, the property. Yeah. The person. Not the vehicle. Like underneath the porch, yeah, the, the front porch. porch. It's kind of the term that's, that's kind of ran its course. We, we no longer use no longer use it's just I know I heard it in the book, what was it? So, yeah. yeah. But like, let's keep on track. Oh. An unoccupied structure. 
Al, Al and Tim want to go first with the uh, you get with the uh, common twist. Do you have anything for yourself? Well, we just want to define our group. Too. But the group uh, that we have is a very loose knit group, obviously, and uh, basically it's defined on our Facebook page. So if you go on, uh, if you all of you go on Facebook, if you're not you, some of you, most of you, some of you. But it's defined, pretty much defined as our group, and it's basically a partnership in crime, uh, a partnership with the police department and sheriff's office, and this will be achieved through the development of crime awareness, observations, skills training, and reporting. So that's our job, just to keep an eye out and report what we see. Oh, and then, of course, on our website, we don't want to be, the Facebook website for the Crime Wide, we want to be posting things that that don't need to be posted, uh, no bickering, no slandering. So it's no just trying to sell items, right? We're trying to sell <laughs> items, <laughs> items for sale. No posting, we are sell items for sale, profit activities for advertising. <laughs> and just would stay, pretty much stay on topic. That's more, what's the, that web page called for community ideas? What's the ideas of opinions. Ideas and opinions. Ideas and opinions. So yeah, ideas yeah. and opinions <laughs> page is going to be the ones that gather. Okay. The community co-op page is the one they can go there and pretty much discuss anything. Mm -hmm. You can sell stuff on there. Uh, there's also a group I created specifically to discuss right. ways to better golf for. It's the community betterment group. Okay. So anything that's not crime watch related but you still want to talk about, you can definitely do so. But please move us to the betterment group. That way we can keep things more organized and on top. Also, they want to mention as well, that um, Al and I are going to be running Crime Watch from here on out unless someone else would like to step up and we can vote on it, whatever the case may be. Um, Al's also our citizen on patrol. And the citizen on patrol is separate from Crime Watch, but he does observe and report. He doesn't get involved, he doesn't try to assist the police, he is there to be eyes and ears to help out. And separate from Crime Watch. Just to make that clear. Heard him talk before about it. <laughs> There was something very well a few months ago. We did. We need to run down uh, how many vehicles that were burglarized, robbed, whatever you call it. Uh, how many they turned, how many were unlocked. So yeah, well, I listed, I listed every vehicle burglary we had last month. Um, let's see, we have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, so four, we had 14 total vehicle burglaries last month. Now I'm trying to see uh, which ones were, were locked. Yeah, I thought they had run that down. We've had, had so far one was locked, like a window was broken, but it, it appears as if it was someone who knew them. Oh, yeah. I, I mentioned that on the war too, in the middle, we believe it was a, a partner who broke the window to steal items. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, you don't really know how many of those 14 were your locked vehicles. All so far. Okay, we had one that was forced, another one forced entry where it broke a window to gain entry and still items. Items were in plain view. So other than that, like there was no vehicles that were locked and didn't have anything in plain view that were broken into. So if you go home and you lock your car and you hide stuff from plain view so they can't see through the window, you're pretty good. You should be okay. Um, I always recommend, I got one for my two cars, you can go to any um, auto shop, auto parts shop like Advanced Auto or O'Reilly, you can get a, we used to call them plug. Yeah. I recommend one, I'm not endorsing them or, or trying to make the money or anything, but me personally, I have two called Fortress, which the club has one hook on each side, the Fortress has two. You put that on your steering wheel, and it's gonna take them about an hour to cut that if they got into your car, most of the time, they're, they want to hit as many cars as they can, so they're just pulling on your door handle and see if it's unlocked. If it's unlocked, go in, steal 10 bucks of change, and then go. But they don't want to. They don't want to cause any kind of a noise or be seen. So they're not going to, unless they know they're going to get something, they're not going to break your window. See, I've got, I've got a Jeep. That I keep my yeah, the convertible. And that, I call that. I call that bait. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, it is just absolutely. The electronics have gone down, and it, every little thing that. Every little perk that you get with Jeep Cherokee doesn't work on mine. <laughs> mechanically, it sounds. Got brakes, got horn, got yeah. Mechanically, it sounds. Okay. Now, I cannot lock those doors. If I lock those doors, it sets my alarm off. And I cannot. I mean, some 
I've got a whole list of tricks that will get it turned back on, but I've got to sit there and go through every one of them. They just don't keep anything in there. At that particular time. So I say, heck with it. So I won't keep anything in there, though. So I just leave it open. Okay, now, there's nothing there visible. So you sort of think, well, they'll probably just run their hands. Well, if it's a lock, they're going to find it underneath your seat. They're going to go underneath your seat. Well, that's what I got rat traps for. Rat traps. I got rat traps all over that car. That's not a bad idea. Put some in my seat. I like that idea. We also had in Ward 3, early last month, a big epidemic of mail theft. Yeah. Um, What's going we, on? Yeah, there was a rental car that was seen, and you know, kids were getting out. Not kids, you know, like uh, um, older teenagers yeah. getting out, going through mailboxes, taking whatever they could, and then getting back in the rental car and going. They must have thought that Social Security checks still coming. <laughs> you know, some people were mailing money, and they got that money. So people were out. Items. I had one lady, she, uh, a door was stolen from her and took that report. A door? Yeah, um, a house door? Like, yeah, for her back, like, um, she bought it off Amazon Prime or something like that. And they left it at the front porch and they took the door. Oh, it wasn't right. installed. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't installed. No, 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 I didn't mean it was installed. I, I did. She, she bought okay. one to replace her old door. Yeah, it, was door. Was it was a glass door for your shop. They didn't know what they were getting in. Uh, they, were, they were like, oh, they see this big box. Yes, they oh, thought that was a TV. Yeah. It was a glass door to a shop. Yeah, they looked like a big so TV. They took it. Exactly. And they go. They thought they got them a big TV. Um, that was more the beginning of last month. Not a whole lot since then. Um, the bicycle thefts have gone down a little bit. There's, there, there's they got them all. The, yeah, <laughs> the majority of them are still <laughs> unlocked. Um, I've seen more bicycles locked up Good. in the downtown Gulf. Yes. So I was in Cat the other day, and there's one just sitting there. And the stolen vehicles, the majority of them were unlocked, keys left in the car, <laughs> or the visor. <laughs> So, and the other one, most of the time it's a stolen vehicle and the keys are missing. It's because you left the car unlocked and the keys were in there. It's, it's hard, getting hard nowadays to just break in a stolen vehicle, break into your car, and start the ignition by wiring it up. Because of technology nowadays, most, most of the time you need the keys with the digital chip anymore. Yeah. The old Plymouth, not old, but like early 2000s, correct me if I'm wrong, you need to put a screwdriver in on it. That's yeah. correct. Oh, just set that up. <laughs> But, uh, common knowledge. Yeah. yeah. So Fourth of July is coming up. As you live close, yes. to, you hear it, I'm sure. Oh yeah. All the time. Yeah. Stan, maybe you don't hear it as much. I can see it from my garage. You probably hear it, but not as much as Margo. What's that? The fireworks. More, more of the fireworks. You hear what? The gunshots. Yeah. <laughs> You win it. And you're here too. You're right here. Oh, that's how the board. I mean, we've got bad casings in our backyard, in our back of our house. Didn't get it once. Yeah. People are morons. They want to shoot guns in the air, and they they don't realize what goes up and goes down. There was a nice boy in uh, what, Ocala near there or south of Ocala got hit by a bullet coming down. Yeah, permanent brain damage. We had a guy last year. He was drinking a, a can of Budweiser and it went through the bill of his hat and skimmed oh his nose. <laughs> so if he would have been like a yeah. leaned in a little more. Uh -huh. wow. yeah. I know Ohio has the biggest part of the <laughs> telephone service up there is in the air. Yeah. And the day after the day after Fourth of July, the day after New Year's, it was always big it was a cable lounge. Because the guy got out of the front porch, take his rifle and shoot up in the air and get a telephone that? cable. And just ruin it, and you got to go through everything together. Do you know that's a federal offense? Yeah, I'm sure it would be because it's communications. Yeah, and that's a federal offense. Now down here, a lot of the cables are underground; they're buried. So if you think, well, I'll, you know, I'm going to fire a gun, I'll just fire it into the ground. Well, they might not work for you. You don't know what's in the ground. So I always recommend just go to a, a approved shooting range. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yes. There's many of those around. Yeah, those yeah. 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 They have excellent targets. Uh, nice. Oh, nice. 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 Yeah. You're going to fire a gun off, take the rounds out, blow it up with blanks, shoot it all you want to. There used to be a gentleman on uh, Child's Park just south of 22nd and 49th Street that every year we would hear it sound like an AK going off. Mm -hmm. It'd be like a banana clip. You remember that, right? Just 30, 40, 50. past couple of years, I worked New Year's Eve and I'll post the video. We'll sit down at Wells Fargo Bank under the overhang. And the first 15 minutes of the new year, we'll take video 
I'm not even scared to bring in Wells Fargo. It's too close. <laughs> what if they want to take a pop shot at us while we're under the thing? I want to stay behind the engine block. Yeah. <laughs> I like to go to uh, Regions or the Old Bank of America. Yeah. Or Regions. Regions is the only other cover one around here. Yeah. Um, and so we always include the locker to lose it. It's like preaching to the choir with you all, though. You're not the ones we're telling. Yeah. We hope this gets out and like someone watches that hopefully will not become a victim and they learn to lock the car or lock your bicycle. We recommend the bicycle locks that are solid metal, like a U. Mm -hmm. The long U, more than these chain. Chain, chain is better than the, the flimsy cable ones you buy for ten dollars. Yeah, don't buy one for six or ten dollars. Those I can cut with my pocket knife. Yeah. Yeah. So. Other than that, um, overall crime went down last month. Theft and vehicle burglaries. We had a huge spike in May. When I printed out these this Excel page, I had two full pages instead of just one. I'm not sure why that is, because I would think that the, the crime would spike after they got out of school. It's too hot. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, it could be. It's I mean, too hot. Really, it's still yeah. You don't see that car car in any kitchen anymore. Yeah, the park is very empty. It's, it's hot outside. Yeah. yeah. It's it's there during the day. Well, we had jumped in Trump two weekends ago. It was extremely hot. Yeah. We still had a lot of uh, trash. I think Ms. Tover said two tons. Maybe of trash. Something like that. Yeah, one thing I've noticed on the crime report as well, that if you go to a bar like a Maddie's or Salty or yeah. something like that, people leave their wallet out or yes. their purse, for too. example. And if, even if you get up and go to the bathroom, yeah. or if you go up there and sing, it says one of these was yes. first was stolen from a bar area while the victim was singing karaoke. And this is not the first time. This happened a few months ago while I was down there out playing my game that I play. And there was a woman down there around probably 3, 30, 4 in the morning who came back because her purse was stolen. Uh, and the same thing, she left her purse alone on it, and she had a little bit too much to drink. Yep. If you're going to go down there, leave your purse in your car. Leave your wallet in your car. It's safer there, and if you need it, go get it, and then come back and put it back in there. Credit card, cash, and ID card, that's all you need. Yeah. We've you also had uh, people going around, I had a case last week where they're offering lawn work. And so we had one house, and they knocked on the door, someone answered and said, no, I don't need any lawn work. Another house, no, I don't need any lawn work. The third house, no one was home. So this poor lady had her window broken, and they got in, stole jewelry and an iPad. They were out within five minutes. They, were, they didn't ransack the place. But luckily, they left a lot of fingerprints and a lot of, uh, not a lot, but they left some blood. We think they cut so they didn't get in the glass. So, We'll wait on that case to come back. Usually, it takes, <coughs> usually it takes three to four weeks for prints and blood to come back. But if they've been arrested for a felony, their DNA will be on file. If they've been arrested, period, their prints will be on file. Yeah, one thing is, well, if they're well, walking around with a lawnmower and they're skipping houses yeah. that obviously need to be mowed, yeah. they're probably not out there wanting to touch grass. Right. Or we see two people, two or three people walk with one lawnmower. That's yeah. that's yeah. a facade. Yeah. I would call. I would call in. If you see two or three people walk with one lawnmower, mm -hmm. they might not be trying to mow your lawn. They might be trying to sell something. Mine stole a lawnmower. <laughs> That's it. Mine stole a lawnmower. Someone stole a lawnmower in this report. Yes. Yeah. And if you see something suspicious, call. Yeah. Yeah. If we see something, what should we do? Uh, call. I don't mean call. The phone number. The non or Don't post it on Facebook. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Please don't Facebook. email me if something's in progress. Yeah. Call. If, call. It's, if you have a, a kindling in your head, whether it's an emergency or not, call the emergency number. Call 911. If it's a non-emergency, such as an ordinance violation, a barking dog, um, a loud party, call the non-emergency number, 582-6177. A lot of times you'll be on hold. There's no special number we call. When I call, I'm on hold too. But if it's not a true emergency, you've got to call that. But if you, you're borderline whether it's an emergency or not, uh, always take caution and call 911. That's fine. So, yes, Ms. You know, it's, we're fortunate here because even if it's something very minor, we get attention. And what frightens me is, oh, I hope people never, never vote for the Sheriff's Department to come here because we won't get that attention. The dog's going to bark. The party's going to go on. We don't. We will never get that kind of attention than we do from our police department. Thank you, Ms. Thank you.
amazing. They're a lot busier now than they were four years ago. Oh, yeah, well, it, it, there was times at night when it was in its, in its height. You would have the Exxon parking lot packed, and you yeah. have the, you can't take your yeah. drink. <laughs> you have the Exxon parking lot packed, the car wash packed, and then the convenience store closed, they parked the convenience store packed. Yeah. And the yeah. whole block was packed up when it was real bad. We can't remember, and this is a fact, we're not quite that old, but when that old Laker used to have a dirt floor, and you're not that old, you remember the Dirt, but dirt it, floor? It, yes, sir, it was a dirt floor family bar. I remember the dirt floor where Little Tom was teaching us. Really? Yeah, that dirt was part of the bar back in the 70s. Let's talk about the 4th of July's coming up Saturday. Yeah. We always have a, a, a large crowd. If you want to get a seat, make sure you get there early. Fireworks are 9 10, so. 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. Uh, they should go off around. They should. And I also remember. Oh, this is raining. Of every, of every 4th of July I worked, I cannot remember one that didn't involve a thunderstorm. So <laughs> get your Last spot year. early. Yeah. And parking, um, wherever you can find, just be mindful of the signs fire hydrants, handicap signs. There's plenty of parking at the old Bank of America, yes. Wood I just Park. It's a great place to watch and it's planned by. Just, is it Charlie running? Charlie's running. They'll pick people up. Yep. Continuous loop, the normal yeah, route. Do you like know where Charlie's running? Because I know the one Charlie is going to be in the parade. Well, and this will be after the parade. Yeah. The parade's on the 6th floor. You've got to park for the parade, too, and then hang around for the fireworks. Yeah, the same Charlie will be. Yeah, it'll be the same Charlie. There's events all day. Yeah. But to mention as well for July 4th, as people often forget, no open fires on the beach. Yes, no grills. Yeah, but, but the trolley doesn't go up 22nd anymore from west to east. They used to, be, they used to have to stop right across people's mouths. And they get away with it. I had to walk all the way up to 50, I had to walk all, walk all the way up to Walgreens. They got a bad thing. They got a bad thing. They got a bad thing. And as far as fireworks, whatever you buy at Save a Lot, Publix, Walmart, that's legal. For the most, I mean, that, that's legal. You, if it goes up or blows up, it's illegal. If it goes up or blows up, thank you. <laughs> the, the ten, you buy from a ten, yeah, yeah. it might be illegal. So if you buy from the back of a van, it's probably illegal. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's sparklers and those little snakes and. What's the? So the they sign they sign a form saying that you're using it to scare off birds for your farm. <laughs> yes. How many oh, farms are in South Pinellas County? Does it work on crows? What about chicken farm? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it does work on What do they call it? Does it work on crows? So it's not a with zero cats. It's actually a, it's actually a, it's actually a, it's a misdemeanor to shoot those fireworks off. I'm not going to ask how. Yeah. Please don't. They bite it and it goes up and go up. Yeah. Usually seagulls, but that's we're not doing what we're supposed to do. We're getting off track. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. But then we're getting good information. Yeah. They're appropriate. Yeah, they were down. They were down 31st of Clinton last year. And of course, with all the open, I mean, there's all the brother, tree, and everything else. So they went out in the middle of the intersection and used that as ground zero. Yeah. And they sent off all the fireworks right there in the middle of the intersection. Feel free to call call. We, we get barraged with fireworks calls. Um, but we will eventually respond. It might take us a while. Because we'll get probably a dozen at the same time, but we will we will respond. So you know, all you'll be seeing there with a big black spot. A fireworks oh, call. If you're yes. if you're positive, it's fireworks. That's a non-emergency call. That's not 911. And I can almost guarantee that call is going to wait for you. Uh, question for you as well for July 4th. Yes. I know you have extra uh, officers who are assigned to be on. Every almost every officer is on duty. Correct. Right. Almost. Do you have any assistance from the sheriff's office for St. Pete PD? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> they got their own problem. They got they're, they're with yeah. St. Pete PD, they're busy. <laughs> St. Pete's got their own problem. You also got a figure from just from Gulf Fork Beach. I mean, you have I think five or six significant fireworks shows you can see. You know, you can see downtown St. Pete. Uh, St. Pete Beach has theirs, Treasure Island has theirs. Uh, right. So unless something big happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and everybody is busy. We're not gonna help. <laughs> No mutual aid. No, well, it better be something huge for mutual aid to take in. We don't want that. But yeah, we, we do have just, just about everybody available is working for the July. I'm there are some not involved in the main team this weekend. Are you? No, I'm not. Oh, there you go. There's another yeah. one. We'll do it. That would, that's, that would yeah, have been. We'll probably start fighting The major accident team. Mm -hmm. I'm not on call this weekend. Hopefully, we won't have one. Yeah, knock on wood.
You know, it was, uh, I mean, our last fatality was May of 07. Then uh, Chief Vincent uh, proposed to council to get us on board with the crash team. We did. And almost two to three weeks later, we had our next fatality. So it was very good timing that he got us on board. We're sad the gentleman passed, but we're, we're happy that we're on the team. Because it's eight people, eight sworn professional crash investigators are out there handling the investigation with $200,000 equipment compared to little old me by myself with a kid in the back of my car. Uh, has there been one since the guy crashed into the fences? No, no. Hopefully we go another eight years with that one. Yes. Eight years. You guys have anything else? I do want to comment real quick. If you're calling in to um, 911 or non emergency dispatch, let them know first stop you're in Gulfport yeah. because they don't know that based on where you're calling. Right. So just let them know, say, first off, I'm in Gulfport. Give them your the information, your location. Say, I'm at, say, 49th and Gulfport Boulevard. There's two guys fighting. Uh, from experience, right? <laughs> yes, I'm from experience. <laughs> and then they'll ask you what, what exactly. address. What's the address? Exactly. They're going to ask you for an intersection or address. If you tell them that you're up at Maddie's, they may not know where Maddie's is, so try to have an address beforehand. Yeah. Make sure that uh, you know that they're going to ask you for your name and phone number, which is not required. However, if you don't give them your name and phone number, or at the very least your phone number, they may not be able to contact you for a follow-up. So if it's an anonymous call for fighting, they're going to say, well, where'd they go? Where'd they come from? What do they look like? They're not going to know that information, so they're not going to be able to do anything. So you don't have to give your last name, but at least give something. So that they know. Thank you. I like that. Thank you. Right, good. Uh, I noticed on here as well for the um, so, uh, so, uh, excuse me, celebratory gunfire. If you see someone firing a gun, call 911. Yes. If someone's hit by a falling uh, bullet, call 911. If your property's damaged by falling bullets, don't call 911. Call non emergency. The 582 6177 is a new number. The old number, 89323, will also work at this board too. If you find a bullet and there's no property damage, don't call it. Nothing oh, happened. Yeah. You just found a bullet. Keep it as a souvenir. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Ted. Thanks for doing that. No problem. Appreciate it. Anything? No? Appreciate it. This, this will be. Summer is when we get our, our peak time for property crimes. So just be vigilant. Keep an eye out for things. Watch out for scams. People look like, like we said, the, the one lawnmower and three guys. <laughs> right. If it looks suspicious, it probably is. Yeah. I, you know, something like that, any, anything that you think is suspicious, call 911. If it's a non emergency, just call the non emergency number. 582 6171. Yes, yes, yes. two guys walking through the way And then on the way back, all three of them. That's definitely suspicious, Dan. <laughs> call 911. <laughs> please call 911. What, uh, is there, is there, did anybody ever bring anything up about, you know, if you get into a neighborhood that would like to know, but they're all on 16th, they're on 14th, they're on whatever. Anyway, you can handle a neighborhood, which is unattainable. I don't know pronounce it. Car burglaries. Yeah. yeah. Break, in, break in homes or whatever. About your insurance rates. Because you're in a. What's the dollar today? I don't know. They can. They can do it. We can't raise it. Well, we can do it. I'm sure they live in the city. They can do it. 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 They go up anyway. You could not get insurance on the Harley-Davidson motorcycle in Hamilton County.